are the best ryes that I have tasted for my palate. And again, I'm just one taster, but this is these are the ones that I'm putting forth on the cart. And you know, I bought I bought all of these, but this one, so I didn't buy the the barrel one, and I did not buy the um, rabbit hole, and I did not buy the dad's hat. The rest of these were either acquired in a trade or purchased outright in a store. So that is it. That's a little bit of kind of a synopsis, a little bit of how this is going to go. I'm going to taste through the first round. I'm going to write my notes in my little notebook here. And, and as I am tasting, I will, I, will, I will write my notes. And I'll start kind of like in my head and like trying to communicate to you all what I'm liking, what I'm not liking. Um, yeah. Uh, Chad's brought up the uh, Wilderness Trail Rye. Uh, you know, I'm a, I am had the Wilderness Trail Rye. Definitely very good. I just didn't think it had the muscle to get to this table today. Um, the six-year-old bourbon is also really close. It's on the fence for me. It's 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 on the fence. I'll be honest with you, but I'm I'm not gonna lie. The best wilderness trails that I have had have always been the barrel picks. So that's that's also I think something that's happening wilderness, wilderness trail. I think they're putting out some of their best some of their best liquid is going to you know their customers, which is fantastic. So I think wilderness trail is a is a great great brand, obviously, but uh, I'm really a big fan of their barrel picks. I also saw someone in there uh, ask about Starlight. Uh, Starlight Distillery out of Indiana is, you know, they're doing great things. It's, it's the Huber's family. And, you know, again, I had it. I had it. And one of the, you know, one of the notes I can tell you I got away, from, I got out of it was a really nice sugar cane note. But again, just not the muscle to get on this table today. So let's see if we have any other questions coming in. Now, this is the, this is the angle I can come to when it comes to questions. Uh, let's see here. Will be interesting to see where barrel rye goes tonight. That's a good point, Kurt. Uh, Mark says, can't decide if I should go with the standard. He, Mark's talking about what he's going to drink tonight. Uh, drink what you like. To get you get you something uh, get you something nice and tasty. Um, Mark says he keeps walking past the James E. Pepper. One day he'll buy it. Well, it's not a bad investment. Not going to lie. All right. Uh, Benjamin E's, Catoctin Creek Cash Drink, and 6 and 20 Heirloom Rye are my two current favorites. Those are good ones. Uh, I'm a big fan of Catoctin Creek. I think Catoctin Creek is doing some great things. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now I'm a little bunched up here. I wanted you all to be able to see the bottles, but now I'm going to push the bottles out a little bit so I can have a little bit more room for myself because it is really jam-packed. Uh, I still haven't gotten my, I still haven't gotten these uh, tastings down just yet with camera angles and everything. So, you know, right in here, best rye. Okay, so glass A. These were poured for me. I don't know what they are. Uh, question coming in from Tyser. Uh, let's see. No, Bert, Bert Musgrove asking about Pinhook. I did taste Pinhook. Uh, I thought Pinhook was fine, but not on the table. Uh, Tyson Fleener, Angel's Envy Rye is one of his favorites. Yeah, listen, I love Angel's Envy Rye. It's got that real nice kind of cotton candy, uh, you know, Jolly Rancher flavor profile. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that one. The problem with Angel's Envy Rye is, that I think that's really really allocated. It's it's much harder to get than the bourbon. Okay, so uh, glass A coming off with some 
kind of like grassy notes, like fresh cut grass. Some herbal candies. So herbal, fresh cut grass. Big and right up on you. So this is like, this is like taking, um, to me it tastes like, you know, rye toast and putting a spicy jelly on it. It's definitely got a kick to it. Definitely got a, definitely got a spiciness to it. Now, in tastings past, I have done it with like crackers and cheese and kind of went back and forth. And sometimes I, I, I do that, but you know, for the purpose of functionality and getting things moving and all that, to me, it's just easier just to taste, um, taste and taste and taste and taste than to, to go through all that. Now, if I didn't have to talk into a mic, I would probably be you know snacking in between and if i'm ever doing more than 10 i'm definitely snacking because otherwise you get intoxicated you don't want to get phil chiltered up in here by the way the winner of tonight is going to face off uh you know there's a big hole in this lineup in my opinion uh in that jim beam has incredible rise but it's just there's just not really you know, that, that Booker's Rye that's come out, you know, some of the Knob Creek Rye's that have come out. But again, like to me, the best Rye's that have been coming out of Jim Beam have been barrel picks. So I'm going to put up the uh, put up the winner tonight up against my favorite uh, Jim Beam barrel pick of the last uh, few years. And this is uh, from the Kentucky Bourbon Affair in 2018. It's 115 proof single barrel rye out of uh, Knob Creek. And I'll say this, that Knob Creek is a fantastic rye. It's a great everyday rye. But out of the barrel, it's special. So. Okay, so glass B. Ooh, smelling really Really sweet. Little cherry. Some like, you know, like a sawdust note. Slight hint of cedar. B is definitely is definitely its own style. Kind of meaty, fleshy, if you will. Kind of a, that's a, more of a term we'd use in wine, but a lot of savory notes. But when I look at it in comparison to to A, I feel like A is just a little bigger. You know, A is A is coming is bringing just a little bit more of the game. B is slightly um it's not as edgy as as a let's go to c there you are c so that um that tasting is going to happen in the members only community um and that will be after this one so the 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 members only will get a uh, a taste off between the knob creek rye and the uh winner tonight and that's one of the one of the perks of being a member here is you get a lot of exclusive content with me 
And we have a good time. Glass C. Oh. Mm. Beautiful cherry note. Cherry pie. Cherry pie all day long. Mm. Cherry pie. God, that's beautiful. I really love this one. So good. Mm. So C, I think, you know, if assessing the first taste so far, C is the clear leader in the clubhouse for me. Um, it's got elegance. It's got depth. But it's got that really nice uh, cherry note that is just, you know, dominating. Go to glass D. These got some earth to it. Mm. Earth, spice, pumpkin pie. Just a hint of marzipan. But there's like also on that pine nut on that on that nut scale, which marzipan kind of comes from. It's like a cross between the nuts and the honey. Uh, there's a really nice like roasted pine nut, which a pine nut you would you you use to make pesto with and stuff. And that's kind of a a, a bit of a bitterness, if you will. But you know that's something to keep an eye on. That pine nut note can turn. When I taste that, you get into that second, third tasting, and you start dialing in a little bit more. If you pick up a pine nut, you if you dial it in, really what you find out is it's like a, it, it, it can be like an over oak bitterness there, just kind of hanging in there, but you have to look for it. So glass E. His nose is not pleasant. It almost smells like a bottle just turned. Um, it tastes fine. It's just like in comparison to everything else we've been tasting, it's just flat. Um, he's just kind of delivering like a like a basic like rye bread, rye bread with butter note. You know, it's not. It almost just doesn't. It feels like it's in a it it, it's not supposed to be on this table kind of taste. It's good, but um, even the one I I graded. You know, the lowest so far, which was B. I mean, I'm taking B over over E. At least I think I am. Class F. Donna Nichols says, the only rye I have tried is Rare Breed, 
after watching Fred, we'll be buying top two. Well, thank you, Donna. And and you know, I did have rare breed in the in the race to this to this table, and it did not it did not kind of meet the kind of like what I was looking for. And um, I still think it's great that people like it, and people should like it. I mean, Wild Turkey is a great distillery, but. I'm buying the Russell's Reserve six-year-old rye all day long over that one. But that's just my opinion. And everybody should taste for themselves. Ooh. Well, hello, Glass F. Ooh. Woo. Mm. Peanut butter Reese's cup. Chocolate City. Ginger. Tastes like Christmas to me. F is very impressive. Glass G. G's a bit of a pepper highway. A lot going on there pepper wise. So it's like pepper and baking spices there. I'm um I'm usually I'm usually one to when something is really spicy. I usually want to see something else there. In G, I'm not seeing anything else. Uh, I'm just seeing in your face, here's some spice, you know, kind of flavor. And I like it. I kind of like it. It's one of those that I think can grow on me. I think G is a G is the kind of glass that um, you taste this a few times and you're like, this might be my favorite whiskey. But I think you got to be in the mood for it. I don't think you can just outright just like, hey, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the spice bomb. So it's time to get some calling going. But before I do that, let's get to some questions here. Um, Herdley Medoc, uh, Murdoc, uh, not technically a rye, but have recently been enjoying High West Boo Rye. Such a great flavor in that blend. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. Uh, Corey says, oh, wait, it's in my glass. Maybe, maybe. Laura Simmons just got a hold of Rare Breed Rye two weeks ago and liked it. Well, I'm glad you liked it. That's awesome. Uh, Daniel Feldman says, the palate of a billy goat. Why, thank you. Billy goats eat a lot, as do I. Uh, Kurt is like uh can they add to that dairy queen blizzard Ooh, i love me a dairy queen blizzard i love me a dairy queen blizzard uh Corey's asking about what the wilderness trail rye now Corey, i i did mention uh maybe before you came on but the wilderness trail rye just was good just did not make it to the table so let's see what else we have here um lots of people talking about the rare breed rye and uh three toes of three toes of fury now that's a handle three toes of fury i just so happened to be drinking some very tasty and incredibly affordable old forester rye at fred suggestion that is the best value it is a great value it is a great value and uh it was like it did so well for me last year in these blind tastings but this year didn't do as well i was a little surprised by that uh josh uh Wotala, I hope I said that right, 
2018, Thomas Handy was a gateway bottle for me. Broke it out over fr with friends, giving that year, and then milked the remaining half bottle for about a year and a half. What a gorgeous bottle it was. 2018 was a great year. Mike M. is talk sipping a little bit of Sagamore rye. That's uh, a return to Maryland rye, or at least they're trying. That's pretty awesome. And last, um, uh, last uh, read I'll do here. Tyson Fleener going to Preservation Distillery this weekend for a tour and Bardstown Bourbon Company to eat. Any suggestions on bottles to buy? I like high rye uh, bourbons or rye whiskeys. Uh, I think while at Bardstown Bourbon Company, they have a lot of their Discovery Batch 2. Uh, Discovery Batch 2 is on my list for whiskeys of the year. It is absolutely fantastic. So I'd grab a couple of those. Okay, so let's get to like knocking these down. So we both, we all kind of like came to this, or we, it's it's me. I'm just kind of talking like I have a panel here. Um, came to the conclusion that B, B was probably too sweet for me. Um, and what was, what was the one that I felt, let's see, not, not, pleasant. um, and then E, B and E, uh, seem to be the ones that I was not high on. Okay, so let's let's start there. B, yeah, B's a little. Um, it's got it has a nice butter note. Okay, E. E just feels very basic to me right now after all these. But I think B B has a wood note in there that's a little unpleasant to me. Uh, so I'm putting B in last. Uh, e at uh, at sixth place and here's the thing these are all on the table for a reason these are all standalone really good and I'm being nitpicky right now and so I'm looking for flaws I'm looking for things I like and when you are trying to choose something that is the best I mean it, it's not always easy to do it's like but yeah, in this model I have set up, I have to choose and I have to nitpick. And listen, B is really good. It's on this table for a reason. I really, really liked it. But when I compare it to the rest of the field, it stands out for having a flaw in it that I didn't necessarily catch before. But because I'm tasting it up against these other things, it stands out a whole lot. And E while very drinkable, while very delicious in its own right, it's flat in comparison to the rest of the field. So for that reason, uh, B and E have been eliminated. So, So now the hard part getting more nitpicky all right so I know I know C C and I think C is the only one I know was definitely moving forward let's start with a I really like I really like the approach of a. It's herbal, it's grassy, but it's big and it's got like this big spicy jelly. Like I love spicy jellies, and it has this gorgeous spicy jelly note. Glass D. So when I taste D. 
in comparison to A, D's uh, oak. There's an oak oakiness in D that stands out more, and it's an astringent astringency note there. And you remember me uh, calling out the pine notes. Remember I said that. I said pine notes often in the first taste can later be like an astringency, like woody kind of over oak note. I'm getting it now. I'm getting it now. So D definitely falls back for me on this. I'm still it's still ahead of E and A or E and B, but I'm definitely putting A over over D in that tasting. So let me see how I feel about it up against G and F. Man, the pepper and, and G is just through the roof. I almost feel like I need to bust out the gravy and the biscuits and have a little bit of a glass G and biscuits and gravy. Good Lord. Pepper central over here. Okay, so G is definitely better than D. F. Now see, here's the interesting thing about F. F is 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 like bringing out all this peanut butter, it's bringing out all this earth, and it's bringing out all of these different kinds of flavors. But they're flavors. They're not flaws, or they're not showing off as flaws. They're not coming off as a as a note that I don't want, like a uh, like an astringency, an over oakness, or uh, some kind of uh, you know alcoholy. So D, or I'm sorry, F while showing different layers of unique notes that I'm going to have to make a decision as to whether I like those notes in comparison to G. Mm, I definitely like it more than D. So D is going in fourth, fifth, D. Thank you for playing. And just to make sure that I'm still, now that... Now that we called one more, I'm going to bring C back into the conversation. Taste it one more time. Make sure we're on the same page still. Oh, yes. That smells like heaven. Some bitch. Some bitch. It's just so good. C is so amazing. I honestly, look, I know A, G, and F have some really nice flavors to them. But I just don't know how I pick either any of these over, over C. I just don't know how I do it. So now, I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these th cut these down to A, G, and F, and I'm going to pick. I'm going to start knocking them back. And in my tastings this year, I think I don't think these have gone up against each other before. The earthiness of F and the peanut butteriness of F makes me really excited about it. The pepperiness of G makes me know it's like exactly what I'm going to get. But F still has some spice to it. F has some spice. It has some chocolate to it. It has some peanut butter. Where G remains kind of like a 
like a spice bomb of epic proportions. And it, I have to make a decision as to whether or not I like I'm in I'm in Spice Girl mode, or if I want some chocolate peanut butter. Glass A. And then you come over here on this side, which has this big old herbal grassy, you know, slightly more traditional rhinos. This is hard. It's not C. The, the C one's not hard, but I think I really lean toward A out of these three. I like the way A tastes. I like the way I like the way I, I just I love that spicy jelly note. Like it's just just think of it like that spicy jelly you put on rye bread. It's just I could eat that all day long. In fact, I may have eaten it all day long once in college um, after a long night or two. And spicy jelly is just a, it's a wonderful note. But G, G for all of its beauty, for all the, um, I mean, I love G, I love G. But for all of its beauty, all of its spicy juiciness that it has, it's just, it's a, it's a one-note wonder. And if you're not in the mood for that note, I mean, this is going to fall flat for you. So, and at the moment, you know, I'm, I'm having to make decisions, very difficult decisions, based on what is the whiskey doing to my palate. And I'm getting spice from both F and A, and then I'm getting something else. While G is basically just saying on spice and spice and spice. And that's fine. But it's not enough to win me over that it's better than A and F in this tasting. And again, I could taste differently tomorrow. I could taste differently in a week from now. But right now, G is going in fourth place. Okay, going to revisit C, make sure the love affair is still there. I will say the last time I tasted A, it, it kind of tickled me a little bit. I was like really excited about it and thinking, hmm, maybe, maybe A's the winner. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Glass F. Hate to be the one following that guy. Hmm. Class F is going into third third place. And I mean it when I say Glass A is legit. And Glass A definitely could beat Glass C. But I still think it is Glass C's to lose. This... Uh, Glass C has been the one that's kind of wowed me all night. It's been the one that essentially said you are um, 
you are on the you're on the palate and it's nuance and it just feels right and it tastes right it's you know i mean glass c has been it all night but glass a glass a uh, to me it, it kind of like really cleaned the house here like it was like glass a was was by far and away the only thing that could come close to glass c in terms of how many points on the palate it's hitting the flavors it's hitting um and just kind of the makeup so it's a it's an incredible incredible whiskey in its own right i'm gonna go ahead and take some questions here um rick fontaine says uh lose the hollywood necktie look this is an ascot i like wearing ascots i'm not a snob i'm not a pretentious person but in fact most days you know i when i go out but i like i wear i, I would like wearing ascots i don't understand why everyone's got an issue with me wearing an ascot it's my life uh so let's see what else we got here uh doug pendleson says uh fred starts singing you are so beautiful to me listen doug i thought we agreed that i wasn't going to be singing singing anymore on these live streams uh ch -ch -ch. three toes fury says spice will beat peanut butter interestingly it did not in that particular situation Fred Smurf, I'll be interested to see how the dad's hat rye ends up. I like the cast drink a lot. Well, we'll find out. We will find out. So, here we go. Um, a lot of people asking about Old Elk Rye. Old Elk Rye is is, is something that uh, I have tasted. I like. Uh, Greg Metz is the, is the blender, the distiller there. And, you know, while those are good, they've been nice, good packaging, just didn't meet it meet the expectations to get on the table tonight so eric asks what's the after show um what's the after show topic the after show topic eric thank you for asking is the winner is going to take on my favorite uh jim beam rye of the last uh three years and that's this uh private barrel selection from the kentucky bourbon affair knob creek so um, as you can see I'm, I'm almost out i thought it'd be a good time to share a little bit with you all okay and scott says when the ascot becomes a headband is when everything comes together that's right the members get to see that so here we go to glass a versus c now we have a we basically have a dual of finesse versus big punchy bold so the question is am i in the mood for like a cherry pie finessey kind of flavor or i want like the herbal kind of spicy boom in your face spicy jelly i think a lot of what i like about c is it reminds me a lot of those old rye whiskeys that I've tasted from, say, 1935 to 1955, which really was an incredible time for rye. Um, and it, it, it smells a lot like it. It tastes a lot like it. To me, it tastes like old school rye. Mm. Oh, wow. There's no doubt about it. A is a great whiskey. Not a good whiskey. A great whiskey. A is going to be in that higher, echel higher echelon of, of like products every day of the week. 
I absolutely think it's delicious. It's a great sipper. I want to be by the fire pit smoking a cigar with it. Probably an opus with this, you know. And and I just I, I want to enjoy this more. But what C does is what only the greatest whiskeys of all time do. And that is, is it like completely just mesmerizes, mesmerizes my palate. Like every single inch of my palate, like inside my mouth, is getting some kind of like tingle or sensation. And it just, it just like takes me. And I really am at a loss for words for it. I can't just come back and you know say something that's why I like that's why I like why like talking about tasting notes is so much more difficult than writing with writing like I can just I can just have my my eyes closed and think about it and then come back and write about it but when I'm tasting and then talking about it I'm losing that whole kind of like um, I'm losing that moment of, of self of thought I'm losing the moment that I usually would take to write or do something and in I'm not saying that I, the, the whiskey selection changes any differently, but how I, you know, uh, phrase it does. And this is, C is just, it's just sublime. I mean, it, it's amazing. C is amazing. I knew it from the moment I tasted it, and... Um, and it remained amazing all night. So, so A goes into second place, um, and C is your clear-cut winner. So, how about we find out what they are? Uh, I'll take a few questions here while we're at it. Uh, Ren and Rob say it's uh, got to be the Rabbit Hole Founders. Hey, listen, Rabbit Hole Founders is very tasty. Um, just had that also with Uncle Cracker, if you haven't seen that podcast. Uh, back to bourbon. Hey, Fred, just picked up a KC Cash Drink 12-year-old, 120.5 proof from Westport Whiskey and Wine. Have you tried it? No, but that's a great pickup. Uh, is that one of their barrel picks? Because Westport Whiskey and Wine, great barrel pickers. Love those guys. Uh, Wild Willie is saying, Saz. Maybe. Here we go. Um, I am drinking along with some dad's hat cast strength. Right on, Jared. Ah, I'm all excited about that one there. Okay, uh, Benjamin Eves, have you found uh, a regional rye difference? I found most Midwestern ryes have uh, very distinct notes. Now, here is actually a great, um, here's a great, you know, conversation to have in that, the world of rye, and I just wrote about this for a United Kingdom magazine, but the world of rye really, uh, for a long time, was Pennsylvania and Maryland. But you know, it, they didn't ever really, they never really recovered from from prohibition, and only it's only been in the last 15 years that we've seen the resurgence in rye, and that's because of the Indiana Distillery, formerly owned by Seagrams in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, now MGP Ingredients, formerly LDI. They were selling stocks to craft distillers who were bottling them. And putting them out in the market. Now there was all these shenanigans going on, like Templeton removing the state of distillation, and they they got sued and they got called out, and everybody put on these fancy backstories like my grandpappy made this rye whiskey this rye whiskey back in 1842. Just so happens it's the same as the ingredients at MGP in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. But of course that would be. You know that would get kind of like called out people would move away from that sort of marketing and now we're in a much more transparent space but but from a flavor perspective that distillery basically created those whiskeys for blending purposes in the seagram's portfolio in fact that was that rye whiskey was a 95 percent rye and it came out with a very specific dill note so like dill like the dill that makes uh Dill, dill pickles. That particular uh, herb is how a lot of those whiskeys tasted. Now, Kentuckians have never been great rye distillers. One of the reasons why is when you ferment rye, it foams, and it foams so much 
that the distillers in Kentucky who are used to distilling corn or predominantly corn recipes, when they would put something in there that was uh, over you know, the rye threshold to make it rye whiskey, which it had to be more than 51%, it, they would foam over. And in the 1970s, they would actually coat the inside of the fermenters with, with lard. The lard would absorb the enzymes that would make it foam over. And so if you have some uh, Kentucky rye whiskey that was bottled in the 1980s, 1970s, there might be a little bit of hog lard in there. Now, with all that said, there is absolutely a difference in flavor profiles from region to region. But I think that's changing a little bit. I think we're getting a little bit back to a base. Uh, and in fact, you're seeing some 95.5 recipes come out of places like New Riff, um, also like this this rabbit hole. You're gonna find you're gonna find like a little bit more of a of a streamlined approach. But all that being said, at the end of the day, you know it still comes out to like what did you bottle? A lot of these people who buy the same rye whiskey as everybody else, they I don't know how, but they fuck it up. You know, I, I don't know how you can fuck up three-year-old MGP rye. I don't know how. But I just tasted one today uh, from Red, Redwood Empire. I was like, how did you all screw this up? I mean, this is three-year-old MGP rye is great, you know, for the money and what it is. But somehow it, it tasted like shit. Um, and so it, it's, a, it's a little bit, it's a story of like, you know, there is absolutely terroir and the rye is coming from all different parts of the world. And that's another story for for another time. But I think people want to know what we are tasting here. Am I right? Oh, man. All right, so I'm going to write down seven... Bear with me here, folks, while I do some chicken scratching. I'm just warning you right now, we have a major upset. We have a major, major upset. Here we go. I guess the question is, um, I guess the question is, are you ready to get on with it? Mm -hmm. Are you? So at seventh place, again, everything was worthy of being on this table. At seventh place, coming from California, distilled in California, Sonoma rye. So you want to talk about different terroir in rye? These folks are doing a great job with that. And in fact, you know, I tasted some of that there tonight. And, you know, this is this is something to be extremely proud of for them to be on this list because they made it. They made it and they bottled it. And California's having a rough go right now uh, with the wildfires and everything. So I think we should, you know, if you all have, uh, if you can, go support these guys. But that right there is deserving to be on this table. It finishes in the top seven for my uh, my my best rise of the year. So I think that's a I think that's a best uh, that's a big win for them. Uh, coming in at six, 
My best, uh, my best everyday rye or under 40 rye was 1776. Look, it was right there, kind of like back and forth between this one and this one uh, for, for, for best of or, or for that kind of like lower spot. And I just felt that this one was was a little bit more drinkable, didn't have flaws. So this is this is a good everyday. I mean, I kind of said this is a good everyday sipper. And boom, there it is. At number five, number five, it came in second in a recent blind tasting. Uh, Rabbit Hole uh, Founders Collection. Now, this is a six-year-old. It is absolutely delicious. And as you can see, I've been pouring it out for friends and everything. And it has, I mean, again, it deserves to be on this table. It is excellent. It's absolutely excellent. And I think there's a lot of people who may actually take go through this whole flight and pick this one number one. But for me, tonight in this tasting, Rabbit Hole is in at fifth place. In fourth place, Barrel. Barrel Batch 3 comes in at fourth place. Now, this was a very good one. This was absolutely uh, excellent. And, and let's see, what, what were my notes on Barrel? So, so that was uh, four. So this was the this was the uh, the spice bomb, right? So so G was the this so barrel was the spice bomb. So if you all are looking for um, you know that crazy spiciness, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, let's see. Yep, G. Yep. So if you're into that you know crazy spiciness. You know this right here. If if you are a spice bomb fanatic, uh, you know this is the one. This is your winner tonight. So you can find this one if you are like all into like spice, 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 spice. But just know, it's just spice. Like I did not get much else after that. You may, but I didn't. So at number three. At number three. Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig. So this is one, you know, this is probably the most available one in the bunch. Um, and it just beat, you know, some 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 limited edition stuff. So this Elijah Craig from from Heaven Hill, this rye right here, it was to the top three, top three for a reason. And so that leaves us with the Sansrack 18 year old and dad's hat rye uh, in the mix for one and two and let me talk about both of those and how they're both so different and how like it's just you know both of them are, are great um the dad's hat rye is a pennsylvania rye all right so this is a this is a rye distillery that's trying to bring pennsylvania rye whiskey back it is it's one that is not um you know, there's not a lot of a lot of attention on Pennsylvania rye right now. And I'm just telling you, if you are not looking at Dad's Hat Rye, if you are not looking at what they are doing, you are missing out as an American whiskey fan. And I get if you you may not like one expression of theirs, then try another. I'm just telling you, I have tasted almost all of their releases. And what they are doing is historical. It's amazing. And the fact that they were so close, they were so close tonight to winning it all um, is amazing. But the winner is Sazerac 18-year-old from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Uh, this is, I dare say that this is legendary. I think this might be, I mean, I would have to do a flight of all the Sazerac 18-year-olds, um, all the Sazerac rides that have come out over the years. But this is the most memorable, the most the most delicious, the tastiest, the one that has done the best for me in competition or in blind tastings of all the past Sazeracs. This is the one for me that wins best ride tonight. And while Dad's hat, I mean, seriously, Dad's Hat, a small Pennsylvania distillery, came in with a you know came with some nice blows and had some had some depth to it that had that beautiful spicy je jelly note to it. Well, it had all that. It was not enough 
to overtake what to me is an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rye whiskey. And I know what a lot of people are just going to say, well, that's great. I'm never going to be able to try it. And I think I think that's a little bit of a disservice to, to the whiskey. And hopefully one day bars can open up and it, this can be a you know, where you can taste it in, um, in public. But if you think about this, this is 90 proof. This is 90 proof. It just beat a bunch of castring stuff. So the fact that it has the kind of flavor that it does at 90 proof is just, uh, it's a node to what is in that bottle. It's absolutely de delicious. And I am, I, I am so excited, uh, you know, for this to, to go on. I will also say that dad's hat's, Dad's hat. If uh, if if this wins, if this wins my best, um, what's what's going to happen next is the I'm going to take Sazerac and I'm going to taste through the other things. I'm going to taste through the uh, other other categories and I'm going to put all the categories together and I am going to choose my best American whiskey. If the Sazerac wins my best American whiskey, then I will pull dad's hat out to come in to compete for, you know, what is basically second place. Cause I grew up in, I grew up in like, you know, you know, the livestock showing and you would show if, if whatever won, uh, whatever came in second in its division came in to compete for second place in the overall. So that's a little bit of my mindset here, but this is a this was a complete tasting for me. This this tasting showed value. This tasting showed promise. Uh, this tasting showed what we know, um, and it also showed that you know there's blending technique can get you on another level when it comes to spice. I'm telling you right now that for a lot of people, this would have been number one for a lot of people, and and I think that um, the way the whole thing went down tonight. The, the way I ranked them tonight really comes down a lot to preference. And to me, the, the Sazerac rye is just, it's on another playing field. It's, it's by far the best, the best rye whiskey I have tasted all year. And that's to include the Canadian ryes I was telling you about. But it's just, it's just so amazing. It's so good. That said... I will actually not take that one to toast you tonight. I'm going to toast you with the dad's hat because it is, to me, this is an extraordinary accomplishment for uh, for, for that because this was, and this the, the proof on this is 123.2 proof. Uh, it's four years old, cast strength, and, you know, if these guys aren't on your radar, again, check them out. Check them out. This is real rye whiskey, by God. So I'll go ahead and go to some question. Uh, Wild Willie says he agrees that the Sazerac 18-year-old uh, is the most incredible rye he's ever had. Right on, right on, right on. Um, Kurt's bringing up the fact that Herman uh, at Dad's Hat and the team is doing a great job. I'd agree with that. agree with that. Uh, Jason Day says, too bad dad's hat cask is only available at the distillery. Uh, that may be so. Uh, I've had distillery only releases, you know, in these blind tastings before. And those distillery only releases didn't do well. So I think it's, um, this one is definitely, definitely, definitely up there. Uh, Stephen Moore says, uh, is dad's hat your next barrel pick? Ah. I don't think they do barrel picks. I mean, I don't know about that. Um, let's go here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Patrick it says, uh, Patrick Fulmer says, sorry, I just dropped in at the end. Have you had the new Chatter Chattanooga Whiskey Company 99 right? I have had that. I have had the Chattanooga right. In fact, I did. I did do a video on it. Uh, but the video needed some some work and it hasn't came out yet. Uh, but but it's good. It's good, but it's not worthy of this table. Good. All 
Uh, Justin uh, Daring asks, are you surprised by the Elijah Craig rhyme? Uh, I, I am a little surprised. I am a little surprised by the rye, um, by Elijah Craig doing so well. I am. But the reason why I am surprised by that is because, you know, to me, it was, it was good. It was good, very good. And this was a, like, I mean, this is one where you, you just, uh, you just know you can rely on it, you know? I mean, the Heaven Hill Rise are always so good. Rittenhouse, Pikesville, um, but actually, so when I talk it talk it through, I'm not that surprised. Uh, Matthew McNabb, old Carter, uh, batch five rye. Uh, admittedly, I have not had old Carter batch five rye. My my uh, tastings of old Carter is actually pretty weak. The way I used to taste Old Carter was in bars, and that's like a bit of a flaw for this year is that you don't have the same kind of access to whiskeys as you had in year pa years past. But um, I do know, I do know of Old Carter being a, you know a fan favorite for a lot of folks, but I also know for the most part where they're getting their whiskey, and I'll seek something out if I really, 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 really want to taste it. Um, Scott Sewell says, Punch Brothers, the band did a barrel pick with Dad's Hat, so they may do one with you, Fred Minnick. Well, maybe, Scott. I don't know. It sounds like you want a Dad's Hat barrel pick, so I might look for that. Uh, Brian, you know, by the way, this is not anything to do with your name, Brian, but your name's Brian Bonacci, and I just think of the South Park song, What Would Brian Boitano Do? And I'm wondering what whiskey would brian boitano like on this on this uh on this on this flight here uh, in the comments section tell me what whiskey on this list here that brian boitano would like and tell me why brian boitano would like it and if you don't know who brian boitano is google and then tell me okay so anyway brian apologies for that brian Dad's Hat has done uh, barrel picks in the past. MacArthur's in D.C. and uh, a few, had one a few years back. Very cool. Very cool. Um, uh, and my wife comes in here to say Rittenhouse makes a great sour. Yes, and Rittenhouse is on the approved list, my love, for making uh, whiskey sours because it's not a $300 bottle. And... <laughs> Oh man, this is great. All right. Cheers to you all and thank you for coming over here and hanging out with me. I'm telling you what. Mm. Dad's hat. I'm actually going to do a little bit of a substitute. I'm going to pit Dad's hat against the Knob Creek single barrel, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I have to make sure I have enough of this for my American Whiskey of the Year tasting. So that's going to happen in the membership community. And by the way, I'm not seeing anything about Brian Boitano in the chat. Uh, oh, here we go. Lee... Lee says, uh, ice skates and rye whiskey. By God. <laughs> good times, good times. All right, everybody. So if you would like to see the Knob Creek Single Barrel Rye versus the Dad's Hat um, Pennsylvania Cash Strength Rye, four-year-old, become a member. And there will be a link in the membership uh, community shortly in about 10 minutes but i am going to um i'm going to hop on over over there and this how you join is basically you click the join button next to the subscribe button on your desktop and just come on over and join in the fun otherwise click the subscribe button we have uh, live streams here every wednesday night next week 
I think next week, uh, next week might be the best single malt, American single malt for, uh, there's not a lot of them. I think it's just Rua and Westland. But uh, I think next week is best American single malt. Also, I've got a surprise, uh, I've got a surprise or two up my sleeve for live streams coming up. So make sure you hit the uh, like button, subscribe button, and if you want to see all that cool exclusive content, become a YouTube member. You won't regret it. All right, guys, I will see you all in the membership community. Cheers.